Why is the melting point of NaCl, sodium chloride, or table salt so high? The easy answer here is that it is an ionic compound and almost by definition, ionic compounds have high melting points. If you're here to find out why, I can tell you. Ionic compounds are made when metals and nonmetals bond together. The Lewis structure for NaCl has Na without its extra valence electron and therefore a plus one charge, and Cl along with the seven valence electrons it brings and the extra one from sodium. That gives it a minus one charge. But this is just one unit of a larger crystal. The way that sodium chloride is actually arranged, and this is three-dimensional, is that the chlorines alternate both horizontally, vertically, and depth-wise with sodiums. Here's me drawing a bunch of chloride anions. I could label them all Cl minus, but you don't have time for that. And the sodiums, which are smaller, that's the only reason I've drawn it this way, are in between them. Now, this is happening both horizontally and vertically, up, down, and in a third dimension. In fact, if I was going to try to draw that, I might draw another chlorine back there and then a third one back there. We'll just draw a little three by three crystal, I guess. Hmm, may not have done a great job there. The idea being that the chlorines and the sodiums are alternating everywhere. I guess there's a sodium hooking those two together, sodiums hooking those together, sodiums there. There's a sodium holding those two together. You can see that in three dimensions, each of the chlorines is surrounded by six of these sodiums, and each of the sodiums is surrounded by six of these chlorines. Left, right, top, bottom, front, and back. We call that, by the way, an octahedral arrangement. If you're writing an answer for your teacher, say that the chlorides are octahedrally arranged around each sodium and the sodiums are octahedrally arranged around each chlorine. In the solid phase for salt, and salt does come as a solid, this is the arrangement of the atoms. You know what? There's actually extra chlorines here that I forgot about as well. There we go, now it's alternating in all directions. That makes way more sense. There's a chlorine, there's a chlorine, there's a chlorine, there's a chlorine. Now you can see it, top, bottom, left, right, and then there's one in behind it and one in front of it that I'm not showing you. In order to melt this, you would have to break each ion away from all the things that are surrounding it you end up having to break between three and six ionic bonds just to separate a single ion out of this lattice. I say as little as three because like this edge chlorine could just get popped off and it's only connected to the three if this is the one on the very outside of the crystal. Ionic bonds are strong and it's gonna take a lot of energy to break even one of them. It takes even more energy to break three to six for every single one of these that you're trying to pop off of it. When you are melting an ionic compound, you're trying to break these ionic attractions, which are already very strong, but because of the arrangement of the atoms, you're breaking more than one every time you're trying to pop an ion off. The melting point is high because you need a lot of energy to break all of these ionic attractions. There you go. There's an explanation with a pretty picture. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.